The 2024 Republican primary battle between Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis starts in Iowa today, where DeSantis aims to challenge Trump's lead by appealing to uh, pro-life conservatives. Uh, while Trump actively works to undermine DeSantis's reputation and maintain his popularity among Iowa Republicans, it all kicks off today, of course, in Iowa. So what has to happen for either one of these really like-minded candidates to win this important state of Iowa? Love to hear from you. Your calls are coming up at 800-859-0WJR. The main points, I think, of contention between Donald Trump and DeSantis revolve around their approach to pro-life issues and their stance on policies that really affect things that affect people in Iowa, much like they do the rest of the country. DeSantis is positioning himself as a real strong candidate and advocate for pro-life principles. Uh, he's highlighting his recent signing of a bill that bans abortion after six weeks in the state of Florida. Donald Trump has criticized that law. One point of, I guess, distinction and difference between the two. Donald Trump questioned DeSantis's commitment to a national ban on abortion. I don't think Trump likes that. Additionally, there is a disagreement between the two regarding renewable fuel standards and subsidies for U.S. farmers. They're going to be talking a lot about this on the campaign trail, which really, I think, in effect, it does kick off today in the state of Iowa. Let's bring in Rashini Rajkumar, political strategist and host of the Crisis Files podcast. Hi, Rashini. How are you? Good morning, Tom. Great to be with you. You know, it's interesting the the kind of banter back and forth or the, I should say, the slinging back and forth really does showcase how each of these candidates and probably the entire Republican field will be doing a little cherry picking of what are the issues that matter in a particular state because it is definitely not uniform around the country right now even when you compare Republican state to Republican state or Democrat state to Democrat state. So there is a bit of a minefield out there for both Trump and DeSantis. Yeah, exactly. So Iowa's got a pretty strong pro-life contingency. Uh, they have praised Ron DeSantis for this bill that he signed uh, banning abortion after six weeks. And they kind of criticized Donald Trump's response to that law. But Iowa is Iowa just like you talked about. Will, will that abortion stance, do you think it's going to resonate with uh, conservatives in other states around the country? I just don't know if it will, because it seems like that is the issue that didn't bring the sweeping Republican wins uh, from the midterms that, you know, they wanted, they were predicting or hoping for. So it really is one of those pieces that is still such a hot button issue. And then remember, in any state that has caucuses or primaries, uh, it is those are the party faithful, right? So what are what is each candidate doing to really understand what the rest of the Republicans in the state of Iowa or in the state of Kansas or in certain Republican strongholds are really thinking? Because when it comes down to it, even if you are anti-choice, pro-life, however you want to call it, uh, there are a lot of other issues that are more important to some of those Republican voters that the abortion issue isn't going to be that litmus test and might not be the thing that a DeSantis or a Trump really wants to carry the flag for for too long. Yeah, so maybe that that's a big issue in Iowa, but not elsewhere. Uh, but it's important for each of these candidates to fight for Iowa because it's uh, it's early it's early on in the voting for these primaries. Um, so wh what do they need to do to distinguish themselves from one another? I mean, how does Trump say I'm different than Ron DeSantis and vice versa? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. They do have to distinguish themselves. But taking on sort of a moral issue isn't the way to go. If I were advising DeSantis, I would say, look, definitely put the spotlight on your record, especially through COVID, in the state of Florida. I mean, so many things that he did to keep his state not only going, but to thrive throughout what the rest of the country was feeling in, in the pandemic years you know, that's something that he should really showcase, dive deeply into and tell us, well, what would he do for the people of America that he started in the state of Florida? So strategy, strategy and being strategically minded is the way that DeSantis should go. Now, on the Trump side here, we've got, you know, some of his policies worked while he was president. Some did not. His biggest Achilles heel is that he gets to be uh, so bombastic. And if he could just lower the 
bombast mm. and maybe seem like a real person to the people <laughs> in Iowa. Look, I used to be a TV reporter in, in Iowa. They like to, you know, shake your hands. They want to um, go to the state fair with you. You know, they want to see that you're a real person who understands the issues uh, at the pump, at the grocery store, and with their taxes overall. So Trump needs to seem more like a real person. DeSantis, <clears throat> excuse me, needs to highlight a very good record that most of the country gives him credit for when they get past some of the social issues that some disagree with him. Yeah, for sure. So I didn't know you were down in Iowa when you were uh, in TV, I guess, earlier on in your career. Um, so, you know, they're they're big on corn, right? In Iowa, that's yes. kind of a big uh, staple. <laughs> the, one very of the... big. All right. So the, the corn is used in ethanol, you know, for gas, fuel standards. The, uh, Trump and DeSantis disagree on this kind of uh, energy issue, this nuanced aspect of energy. And I, it seems that it favors Trump if you're an Iowa because Trump likes ethanol from corn, which benefits Iowa, of course. DeSantis doesn't want to subsidize eth- ethanol. Uh, he thinks it's unfair. He wants to go full in on fossil fuels. Will that nuance there, will that have an impact on the Iowa caucus, you think? That's going to have an impact. So I thought it was very interesting when I saw some of the quotes from Trump on this ethanol issue. I'm like, way to go and really know your audience. I'm a big believer <laughs> yeah. in audience analysis right. because that is a soft topic for them. It's a hot topic. But what DeSantis would need to do is say, look, I'm not into favoritism. I'm into the numbers. And let's break down the numbers. And so he's got to have a very mathematical, objective uh, argument here for the people when he's out there talking with them in smaller settings. Trump should probably stick with this message because it's it's a real um, rallying call for him. But when you really break down the numbers, it doesn't always necessarily work. So yeah, it was it is a very very hot topic. Uh, also, Iowa definitely uh, is so protective of its status. Uh, as we come into the primary season, I actually covered the 1999 mm. Iowa straw poll and the 2000 caucuses when Gore and Bush yeah. were running. It was a very interesting time, Tom. And it's still, even though it's kind of diminished in some of its reputation as that big, you got to win Iowa, it's still very important for nothing else but the headlines, the narrative and to really come up with that pulse of what's happening in America. Yeah, for sure, because they're all going there to campaign, and the, the rest of the nation really is watching. I know it's Iowa, but uh, we're all watching what's going to happen this week, for example. So there's this poll that's been released. Uh, it was released on a Friday by Emerson College. Donald Trump is leading DeSantis in Iowa. I think it's 62, yeah, 62% to 20%. Uh, Nikki Haley is third by a long shot, 5%. So you look at that, 62% for Trump, 20% for Ron DeSantis. Um, what would be considered a success after this week for Ron DeSantis? If he gets a 25, would that be considered, okay, I did my job here this time around? And, you know, I, I think it would be more closer into the 30s. But here's the thing. With overall, they've got to look at the big picture. I realize it's kind of a state by state. We're taking it month by month, by month into the 24 election. But when you really look at some of the numbers that that show, well, who could win against a most likely President Biden? And it seems that uh, others have a better chance. DeSantis has a better chance. So the Republicans really have to have kind of their own come to Jesus meeting with themselves as a party and decide who do we want to back and what are we trying to do here? And, you know, it's probably a little early for that because the different campaigns are going to keep you know, keep going and try to get the nomination on the Republican side. But some of the early polls, you know, I don't like polls that much, but DeSantis does need to have a strong showing. But even if Trump wins Iowa, I do not predict it's the end of the road for DeSantis. There are a lot of states to go. And then it's that bigger picture. What do we as a Republican party, DeSantis needs to ask himself, the other Republicans need to ask themselves, what do we need to do against the Democrats versus just what do we need to do against Donald Trump? Yeah, you got to look, uh, play the long game here for sure. Absolutely. Thanks for your yeah. perspective. As always, Rashini Raj Kumar, political strategist and host of the Crisis Files podcast. Thanks so much. Thanks, Tom.